So right now, it seems like NVIDIA is taking all the food from the table and it's taking that food from companies like AMD and Intel. There is this huge discussion and fear that, hey, GPUs are going to overcrowd and kind of eliminate the need of CPUs. So it does seem like a lot of a lot of people are very bullish in companies like NVIDIA, but bearish in CPU companies like AMD and Intel. On today's episode, I want to take a closer look at what the market sees, um, commentary from NVIDIA, commentary from Intel, commentary from AMD, and obviously my overall thoughts. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. If we take a closer look at year-to-date prices, we can see NVIDIA is up over 239% as I am recording, AMD is second in place with 73%, and Intel is up roughly 37% year-to-date. Uh, for those that are not familiar, NVIDIA is my number one stock. AMD is actually my number two stock in my portfolio. I don't own Intel, but I do believe there is a turnaround story possible here, and it is seems to be it, it seems to be happening right now, right? So I'm not bearish in Intel. Um, and like I mentioned today, what I really want to do is take a closer look at NVIDIA and how it's eating AMD's and Intel's lunch. And is this something that investors should be worried about or excited, depending on where you are in the spectrum? Uh, so first, I want to take a closer look at what's happening. So what I'm talking about today is more kind of in the data center ma market, right? And especially with um, investments from big tech. So uh, big tech companies have obviously reported their qu quarter two earnings or their, their most recent earnings, and they did share a lot about their capital investments. So the first one I want to take a closer look at is Amazon. Uh, and they mentioned that, hey, look, they define capital investments as a combination of capital expenditure plus equipment finance leases. They do mention that, that in the past 12 months, they have roughly spent $54 billion um, in capital expenditure. This is actually down versus a year ago. But remember, Amazon is not just a clouding server provider. They're also a huge kind of e-commerce fulfillment and transportation transportation uh, company. So they do mention that they expect fulfillment and transportation capex to be down year over year, but they do see this partially offset by increased infrastructure capex to support the growth of their AWS businesses. So here you would think if you are a semiconductor, you get pretty excited, right? Because they're not going to spend that money on trucks or on that e-commerce or logistics stuff. They're going to really focus a lot of that money on data centers. So if you are obviously a semiconductor company investor, you're going to get excited. But then they mentioned including additional investments related to generative AI and large language models efforts. And now when we start thinking about generative AI and LLM efforts, this is more focused on accelerators. And these accelerators tend to be GPUs. So we can see from Amazon, they do expect to increase their capital expenditure. And it's mainly focused on the AI market, which bodes well for NVIDIA. Next, we have Microsoft, right? Microsoft in their most recent earnings mentioned that they expect capital expenditure to increase sequentially on a, on a dollar basis, as, no as noted earlier, driven by investments in their AI infrastructure. Again, we're talking here about the AI market and what's leading the AI markets, GPUs from NVIDIA like the H100. So we already see two big tech players saying they're going to increase capital expenditure and most of that money is going to go for GPUs. Uh, now, the final one I want to take a closer look at is Google They or Alphabet, right? They meant that firstly, as it relates to CapEx in quarter two, the largest component was for servers, which included a meaningful increase in their investments in AI compute. Again, this is what everybody's talking about. AI compute, this overall pretty much means two things. They have their own kind of accelerators, the TPUs, but also GPUs. And they do mention they expect ele elevated levels of investments in their technical infrastructure increasing through the back half of 2023 and continuing to grow in 2024. The primary driver is to support the opportunities we see in AI across Alphabet, including investments in GPUs and proprietary TPUs, as well as data center capacity. Uh, so overall, we can see that every big tech player out here, the top three clouding server providers, what are they doing? They are increasing their investments in their data center. Most of that money is going into GPUs opposed to anything else. Obviously, some of them are focused at internal accelerators. I know Amazon also has internal accelerators that they might be focusing on as well, but it does seem like a good bulk of this money is going to go to companies like 
NVIDIA, um, who, who is just leading with the H100. Now, I do want to take a closer look at some of the commentary that NVIDIA shared, that AMD shared, and that Intel shared. Um, but I also want to take a closer look at what an accelerated server or an AI server is compared to a non-accelerated server and why there is a big, big change. So what are accelerated servers? I think the best way to look at an accelerator server is kind of looking at NVIDIA's DGX. Uh, NVIDIA kind of creates these, these kind of pods, and these pods are called, uh, or, or kind of these inserts, and these inserts come with a lot and a lot of different computing components. This is pretty much a mini supercomputer running within itself. Here you can see that this is powered by eight times NVIDIA's H100 GPUs. It has um, other forms of networking connections. It also is powered by Intel's Sapphire Rapids GPU. Uh, so this is pretty much a full computer. It comes with your memory, your GPU, your networking solutions, your CPU, uh, your motherboard, and the list goes on and on. So NVIDIA makes this, but then they use these to kind of create these super computers. And these are the super pods. You can see here in each server, you have roughly four DGX H100s. Uh, so here is how you're building a super computer. And you can see each, uh, each kind of product comes in with eight times or nodes. That's the word they use. Each node comes with roughly eight times GPUs. And that's the main reason between an accelerated server and a non-accelerated server. An accelerated server tends to have some acceleration. That acceleration is normally done by some form of component. Here is GPUs. You also have things like TPUs play this out. When you talk about a non-accelerated server, and this is more just like your traditional server, this is just including um, a just a CPU, maybe some um, CPU memory more likely, and obviously some networking components. But here we can see kind of a more regular, non -tr a traditional, non-accelerated server. Uh, and this is just one rack. Here's a picture from AMD. And this one is powered by two AMD Epics. And then you just can see the amount of RAMs here or, or, or memory just inserted into the slot. But one thing you don't see is any form of accelerated computing. And this is why it's becoming pretty, pretty crucial and why kind of NVIDIA is winning a lot in this game. So for each node or so, right, you do have those two CPUs, regardless of what kind of server you're building. You're building an unaccelerated server or an accelerated server, you're most likely getting hit with a dual CPU product. What makes these accelerated servers better is that they have numerous, numerous GPU. So you can see, and each H100 sells for at least $20,000 I do believe the price point is a lot higher. So here, if you do eight times 20, you're already selling $160,000 of components, where I do believe AMD's and Intel's CPUs sell for less than $10,000. Uh, so here in CPUs, you're probably making less than $20,000 on CPUs. Uh, so you can kind of see this huge difference between an accelerated server and an unaccelerated server. The other thing that's also pretty interesting to know is sometimes, depending on the type of motherboard on the type of, of rack that they choose, on the type of, of like infrastructure that they build, sometimes you can actually just insert a GPU into these motherboards and kind of make these unaccelerated um, systems accelerate it. Um, if not, you might even have to just buy uh, other components and just kind of remake the server, um, but it becomes a lot cheaper, right? If you're trying to go from an unaccelerated server to an accelerated server, you still have a lot of the core components like CPUs, like RAMs, like uh, some motherboards, some cooling, some some kind of hardware as well. So another thing that's happening is in the world right now, there's a lot and a lot of unaccelerated servers. So companies out there, they don't need to go out there and buy new CPUs. They don't need to go out there and buy new memory or buy new motherboards or some stuff like that. Maybe every so often they do, but not all the time. All they have to do now is kind of buy those GPUs and kind of get them implemented, and then their unaccelerated server becomes accelerated. And for that reason, NVIDIA Video continues and continues to win. So now I want to take a closer look at some commentary from a a NVIDIA. But first, I just want to say thank you guys for the support. Um, I just hit 27.7. We're about to hit 27.8. Let's see if we can get that by the end of today. I would definitely appreciate it. Um, I do have uh, education background in the semiconductor industry. I have a master's degree in electrical engineering. I've worked at some pretty cool companies. So I do have a weekly exclusive membership program um, where I do exclusive videos. Check out the link or click join to learn more. I also have a special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Make sure to check that out. 
free newsletter at josenaharo.substack.com. And if you want semiconductor news, check out semiconductorwatch.com. Finally, finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, so now I want to take a closer look at commentary from NVIDIA. And NVIDIA, their most recent commentary, I want to say, comes from their quarter two 2024 earnings call transcript, um, where they do explain a little bit of that, kind of the shifts happening here in the semiconductor market and why they are obviously super, super bullish in this trend. Uh, so in, in the overall transcript, there were some key takeaways. The first thing, Jensen Hong, the CEO of NVIDIA, mentioned that there's two major platform shifts happening in, in data center and computing in general. First is accelerated computing, where accelerated computing focuses on using specialized hardware like GPUs to perform tasks more efficient than traditional CPUs, right? So that's the first thing that's happening. A lot of people are saying, hey, look, actually accelerated accelerated computing, even though it, it might be more expensive in the upfront, it might tend to be a little bit cheaper in the long term or the total cost of ownership, especially if I'm running a lot of software that can be accelerated. The other kind of major platform shift is generative AI. And generative AI obviously deals with uh, a lot of things like large language models, so training of inference, and all that tends to be need to be accelerated to some extent, and they do a lot, lot better in things like GPU. So that's the first thing. The second thing that um, Jensen pretty much mentions is that there is roughly a trillion dollar worth of data centers in the world today. And most of that trillion dollar worth of data centers tends to be on accelerated. So like I showed you guys previous, like those servers that only had like two CPUs. So the, his big growth opportunity is not just the new customers coming in, but those unaccelerated $1 trillion worth of data centers that need to spend money to accelerate that computation. Uh, so that's another opportunity. He also mentions that long-term transitions, he does mention like other industry trends. Um, Jensen believes that the shift towards accelerated computing and generative AI is not something, it's not a short-term phenomenon. Instead, it's a long-term industry transition. And I want to say this is the thing, right? If we're going to look from AMD, we're going to listen from Intel, and we're listening here from NVIDIA, everybody has their own thoughts, right? Some are very, very bullish, like we can see on Jensen believes this is more of a long-term industry transition where maybe someone at AMD and Intel th does not share that same insight. Um, obviously, they do mention that uh, accelerated, comp um, accelerated computing is more cost efficiency and way better performance. Uh, for example, Jensen Hunt mentions that it's a superior cost effective and energy efficiency that accelerated computing offers over traditional general purpose computing. Um, so this is, um, this is pretty much what a NVIDIA mentions, right? I like I mentioned the two big things that I want to take from here is one, the major platform shift that's happening between accelerated computing, generative AI, and also that trillion dollar market of unaccelerated computing that needs to be accelerated. Now, Intel also shares some thoughts. On August 31st of 2023, they were at Deutsche Bank um, Technology Conference, and the CEO actually had a Q&A session. Um, and one of the questions was, hey, look, what, what, what's this thoughts of CPUs versus GPUs and overall the AI market? Uh, so Gelslinger, the... Uh, Pat, Pat Kasslinger, the overall CEO of, NVIDIA, of Intel, mentions that there are three laws affecting this debate right now. Economics. They mention if GPUs are significantly more expensive than CPUs for similar tasks, CPUs will be favored. And this is exactly what Jensen was mentioning, right? It's all pretty much the power of economics. If you have a, a workload that's mainly driven by a software that needs a lot of acceleration, then obviously the GPU wins. And that's what kind of Intel mentions. If there's a product that doesn't need to be accelerated, then there's no point in spending thousands and thousands of dollars on a GPU a CPU will win. And there's tons of software like that, right? There's certain tons of applications that don't need to be accelerated and that a CPU can do fine. 
The other thing he mentioned is Amdahl's law. I'm not too familiar with that, but it's pretty much speeding up a small part of the workload. AI won't dramatically impact the performance of the full application. So he's pretty much talking that, hey, look, if you only need to accelerate roughly 5 or 10% of your workload and the other 90% of your workload is still not accelerated, then it makes no sense in having a GPU. A CPU will be more than fine and you're not spending all that money. So it all depends on how much of a workload you need to speed up and how much of that are you a performance you are improving and finally he mentions the law of inertia um, existing systems have this ingrained habits and regulations that make quick shifts unlikely uh, so the law of inertia right i think it's a, 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 a product in motion stays in motion um right and if there is no motion happening right now then that's not gonna ha it's not gonna go from no motion to motion right away uh so that's what's happening right they do mention that a lot of these systems they have this they have high regulations they have high habits that if they're working fine it's that other saying if it's not broken don't fix it kind of thing uh so it's pretty much saying that hey look obviously it might make sense if this is the case but but um, I, we don't see it kind of happening that fast. Uh, so we can definitely see the different kind of thought process that Intel and NVIDIA believes. Um, Intel definitely has a huge opportunity that says that, hey, look, CPUs are here to stay. Now, kind of taking a closer look at AMD, AMD also shared a few things. They had two conferences. Um, on August 31st, same as Intel, they had a Deutsche Bank technology conference. And here, the CFO of AMD kind of met with some analysts. And first, he talks about the computing landscape. Uh, Gene uh, mentions that there has been a shift towards GPUs, especially for AI tasks. So Gene obviously uh, uh, agrees that, hey, look, there is some shift in wallet, and we're seeing it. We kind of talked about it with big tech but emphasizes that different compute engines are best suited for different kinds of workloads. Very similar to what kind of they, we've heard in the past that, hey, there might be some places where CPUs do better. There might be some places where GPUs make sense. Um, Gene also argues that total cost of ownership, but this is the most important thing, right? Economics. Um, argues that at the end of the day, what matters is total cost of ownerships. CPUs are efficient for a lot of current workloads, such as web serving, social media apps like Facebook and Instagram, right? Social media companies and all these web serving companies, they don't need to have accelerated computing. Uh, they're kind of uh, fourth generation Genoa, uh, Genoa or which one is it? Bergamo CPU will do amazing and will have an amazing total cost of ownership. Um, they also do believe that obviously roles of CPUs in the AI ecosystem, they do mention that right now, GPUs are becoming dominant in AI tasks, but CPUs still play a critical role. Um, you actually, like we saw earlier on, they are essential for managing GPU clusters and will continue to have a presence in the computing landscape. So even if GPUs start to take off, you obviously need some form of G CPU to be able to be the brain of everything having there. Uh, so in the long-term view, Gene is confident that CPUs will continue to be relevant in the long term, both for general computing and for specialized workload, AMD is focused on providing what customers really need based on the economic considerations. Uh, so obviously we can see a AMD believes that, hey, look, we're, we're, it's not game over for CPUs. And then just yesterday at Goldman Sachs, um, Lisa Su actually took a, a, a few questions there at a technology conference. And here, um, Lisa Su obviously talked a little bit about this, and she mentions that data center demand that the data center market remains attractive and will continue to grow. She notes that there will, while there may be a, some slowdown due to the surge in pandemic, the need for computing resources is unabated. Uh, so right now we are seeing kind of a slowdown in CPU processors for the data center market. A lot of people are saying, hey, look, this is kind of more, more evidence that GPUs are going to win because GPUs, there is no slowdown. But Lisa Su has mentioned that, hey, look, it has nothing to do with that. It's more just because of the surge purchases that happened during the pandemic. Then obviously between CPUs and, and GPUs, Su argues that there will always be a place for general purpose computing, which requires CPUs. And CPUs will not be crowded out entirely by GPUs, rather a balance between the two will exist. And obviously efficiency is king, that kind of total cost of ownership. 
Um, though Lisa Su is very bullish in the accelerator market, so Su does acknowledge that the growing roles of accelerators or GPUs, FPGAs, and others, she cites an internal data suggesting that accelerators could form a 150 billion plus market by 2027, which indicates significant growth and would be very, very bullish for a company like NVIDIA. And obviously, all these other players, AMD and Intel, all are focusing as well in AI accelerators. I'll probably do another episode about that. But right off the bat, we can see that, hey, if you are investing in CPU processors, I don't think it's game over for us, um, right? Obviously, I don't think AMD's Genoa Epic server processors are going anywhere anytime soon. I, I, I do believe when I read things like this, you have to take it somewhere in the middle. I don't think it might be as good as NVIDIA thinks it will be, but I don't think um, for the GPU market, but I don't think it will be as good as AMD and Intel say for the CPU market. So obviously a little bit worse for both of them, but in the long term, I do believe there is bullish trends for both semiconductor industries, the GPUs and the CPU market. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys learned a lot. Take care, have a good day and see you next time.